Hey, this is Nate here. In this video, I'm going to show the new features that have been added to the Eclipse Light Engine. The biggest and most requested is Soft Shadows, which are turned on right now, as you can see. Um, it does a little more than just regular old Soft Shadows. It allows you to adjust the shadow hardness along the edge of each individual light for all the shadows that it casts. So within a given scene, you could have Soft Shadows on that light, and then I could have another light with you know hard shadow all the way up like that so it's pretty cool has a lot of possibilities there and it uses a shadow atlas like this where it divides up different shadow maps into a, a whole atlas and it uses the red green blue and alpha channel per light for whatever shadows it casts so like if I add another light you can see now that it used a green that used a blue and it uses the alpha so if I click again you're, you're not gonna see anything different because I'm drawing in full alpha just to show it but it is using the alpha channel uh, the size now of the shadows the resolution the shadows use is now something you can adjust on your own whatever you want so maybe for pixel art you, you want something different um, you, there's two settings which is the shadow atlas size and the shadow map size which I'll show in game maker in a second and for most platforms, you know, you want 2048 because it's like the default size, but it allows you to bump it up if you wanted for some kind of really high def game or down, of course. Um, and if you add, keep adding them, you can see it fills up the shadow map. And once it hits 24, because this shadow map has six, six maps in the atlas. So if I hit 25, there it goes to a new atlas. I mean, these are still there. It's a little too bright, though. <laughs> too many lights. Uh, originally... I can show I still kept the one bit shadow maps which are shown here uh, this this surface in the upper right there is it's being shrunk down but I can I can up it a bit and that's using one bit per light and you can see it's got hard shadows on the edges see the difference um, and it is something toggable at runtime so if you wanted to give that as like a feature or a performance option for maybe lower end devices or especially mobile devices you could do that the one bit shadow maps if i keep adding lights you can see it starts adding more they're they're a bit more performant and and i only marginally so you can still do hundreds of lights uh given the right gpu no problem um let's see i'll look in here and show some of the other updates so the regular game object now it's changed a little different how you assign the material and normal maps the before you had a drop down where you had to basically specify hey it has a normal map or a material map that's gone now you just assign the sprite if you have it if you don't that's fine the and then now there's metallic and roughness sliders there used to be like these pre-made color uh, placeholders now it's just a slider and if you have a map or don't it's still going to affect it on the on the object when it's drawn so um, that way if you don't have a map you can kind of try to fake it if you want with like with like a solid primitive or something so the option it's just nice to design it that way so now you can change whatever you want with the slider um, shadow depth is still there but now it is strictly used for like how much shadow hits the object before it also used it for depth sorting depth sorting is now handled completely internally uh, there's one thing to note about depth sorting though when you change the depth of an object you should call this function update depth um, as you see it calls it here after the object set up and that's because the depth uh, when it is used for depth sorting when it does the normal and material uh, maps and it's packed into a single color like this and then this function just hides all that so you don't have to actually manually remember or do any of that you just call update depth anytime you change depth so then set emissive is a new function all these are new functions actually um, it handles like this the bitwise calculations here to it basically packs the emissive strength into the normal map so it's pretty convenient um, what else is there set metallic set roughness set metal and roughness at the same time these are all just convenience that way you don't have to clamp them and you don't have to call color make material depth again so the big key is just hiding this and make it more readable set roughness makes more sense then the shadow object has the same functions as well because it's basically it's basically the same thing but they're not inherited from each other they're, they need to be separate so the functions are just copied in there 
but the big difference too now is shadows now have a shadow magnitude which is really cool so all the th shadows are calculated in 3d and i can show one here with like a lower magnitude so when they're calculated before Originally, I had it just multiplying by kind of like an arbitrary number to give kind of the best look. But if you have a top-down game versus a platformer, you probably want them to look different with the shadows. Usually a platformer, the shadows go on like infinitely. So you, you could actually up it or you could go down. It's more obvious. If, if I turn it all the way down to one and I'll run it, give it a second. Um, if you go all the way down to one, it's going to just multiply it by one. The magnitude is going to be small. It's going to be basically the exact calculation that it, it, it did originally. So there you go. So see, it's a really short shadow. And in a top-down game, you might want that. You know, as, as the light gets farther away, the shadow does grow. But it's, as you can see, these all have a magnitude of eight. So they they, they go a little longer. And then that's the magnitude of one. Um, the sun's in the way there. So, um, you know, it's up to you. In a platformer, you know, you might want to just bump it all the way up to max. And you can go beyond max. Um, you could override it or make a child object, whatever. It it doesn't have to be 32, but I found, like, eh, it's a good number to where you probably... It's going to go way past the screen edge no matter what. So you don't have to really... You don't need to go above that. It's just, it's just a scaling factor. So uh, the light, as you can see, it now has that shadow hardness, which is pretty cool. Um, and that that only affects when soft shadows are on of course when the sh hard shadows are on the original one bit ones it's going to be the same as before uh, if i open the light engine it looks a little different and all this is in the document the user guide that's included with when you download eclipse so now that you have shadow atlas size and map size and i put in some of the the normal texture map sizes uh 2048 like i said is default it's using 1024 but you know i could bump it down like if we go to 512 and we'll run that you'll see the shadow atlas is got a whole bunch of little ones in there and so now if i just make crazy amounts of light it just keeps filling them and filling them and i forget <laughs> it's nice obviously you wouldn't use this many lights it's a bunch of nonsense but I move it to where you can see in the upper left there you can see I got 76 lights and the, the atlas isn't even full I believe when you have it set up like this it's seven rows by four so you have about 112 lights so and that's in a single atlas which is nice that means you're you're not having to do extra draw calls and it's, it's a lot more performant by just packing them in there so but the options there um, you know if you're using pixel art you might want to bump it down even more to get more pixelated shadows or whatever whatever your choice and then you can set the default but like i said you can also change it at runtime as well so and then the layer normal front and material those are new they function the same as the back layers or the normal uh begin normal end material begin material end etc so th those are where you tell the engine where you want tile and asset layers to draw so and you you put a start and a stop on it or however you want to do it uh, and to assist in that so that you don't have to like duplicate your work with tile maps there is a here's the object a tile layer copier they're in this folder on the right that says helper objects and all you have to do is drop it in the room and tell it what the base layer is like where the actual color tile is and then as long as you have the other two layers set up you don't have to place the tiles you, you need you do need the layers set where you want them it'll it'll copy in all the indexes from one tile map to the other so if we go back to the room you'll see i have a I have one right here i have two set up because i have a front and a back and there you go so tile layer tile zero i don't know why i named it that is the actual this stone texture here Oop. so here's the stone texture and then if you look at normal the normal begin has a normal map, but it's not actually set anywhere. You see they're, whether they're visible or not, uh, they're not set. But instead, it's set here, normal begin. So it's going to copy all the indexes from tile zero to normal begin. As well. It's just a nice, easy, designer-friendly uh, helper object. And then there's also a parallax one. It's not used in this project, 
but it, it'll allow you to do multiple backgrounds parallax without having to manually set them up other than other than right here of course you have to tell them the name and the name and the speed that you want you do need to tell it what camera object to use um because parallax is based off the camera x and y so and what the way you would set it up they're all arrays so they just need to match so the background has speed x speed of four y is one if y is one that means it's it's basically not going to move because it's going to be multiply by one you're going by the camera y and then i included a layer for the offset for the the y coordinate just because a lot of times you might have like a cloud line or something that you need to bump up or down um, and i included that there so it's pretty convenient so if you were to add more layer names here uh, you just need to add the corresponding speed and or offset of what you want and it'll it'll automatically just loop through them and apply the parallax based on the camera x and y uh, that you set so so that's all the user facing features of this update internally there's been just some tweaks here and there you know improvements to shaders the lit particles now do their normal maps and depth sorting correctly the the next update will add sprite shadows so it'll it'll trace the outline of a sprite and create a, a shadow shape from there instead of having to use a path uh, the both options will be there because sometimes you might want to you might want to specifically use a path but uh, it'll be nice to have them generated automatically so anyway thanks for watching and i hope you enjoy the update